Hello, and welcome to episode six of Slash Tracks Action News. I'm Alex Vanover. And I'm Josh LaRue. Uh, we have a very full, full episode of Slash Tracks News tonight. Episode six is going to be maybe, dare I say, the greatest episode that we've ever done. Of the six, this is going to be the GOAT episode. What do you think, Josh? How are you feeling about tonight? That's why I'm celebrating tonight with an ice cold Crystal Pepsi, 30th anniversary edition, right there, buddy. Breaking out the fine drink for this. That's like opening a bottle of Cristal, uh, the equivalent for the 80s slasher librarian, is he opens the bottle of Crystal Clear Pepsi, which is what I used to get after a third grade basketball game, uh, if we did well. Uh, It was delicious. I loved it. I still, when they release it, you know, uh, for special specialty, you know, time frames or whatever, I always try to stock up, but we haven't had any in Oregon in a couple years. Yeah, they, they were going to do it, uh, like, they released it in <clears throat> 2016, 17, and 18, then Canada in 19. They were going to do it 20 and 21, but COVID set them back. Uh, they just gave away 300, uh, to 300 people six bottles back in January with a Twitter hashtag contest. I did not win one. I didn't know about it till it was over, or I would have won two sets like I did two ecto coolers. by God. Um, but, uh, I bought this off eBay for a price that I'm not proud of. You're Um, like, you're like, had I known about the contest, I would have been setting up burner accounts left and right, man. It worked with Ecto Cooler. I got two of those suckers, but, uh, I did, I did, I did pay an outrageous price for this bottle, like 20 bucks, uh, for one bottle of, uh, Crystal Pepsi, but I had to have it. But this summer, man, it's coming back from June until September. If you're a fan of Crystal Pepsi, get out there and stock up. You can also get Flamin' Hot Mountain Dew right now. I've got one. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm going to pop that open. Maybe maybe on the next podcast I can try Flamin' Hot Mountain Dew. Wait a minute. Flamin' Hot Mountain Dew is ri- like Flamin' Hot Cheetos? Yes, there is a Flamin' Hot. Want me to show it to the to the audience? Yeah. Let's take a look. Do you have it close to you? Yeah, it's right. It's like right over there. I'll be. I'll be right back. Stay okay. tuned. We'll be right back. Wow! Breaking news, guys. Flaming hot Mountain Dew is about to make an appearance on uh, the, on the episode right now. We're still waiting, way longer than, than six seconds. He must be taking a toot off the bottle. Here he comes. And I got one for you too, so I can just send it to the screen. Is that what I can do? Yeah, give me one. Send one of those over here. Flaming hot Mountain Dew. There you have it, right there. It's a what real. What the hell? Dew. What's the calorie count on that can, right there? Uh, 170. Okay, so almost like yeah, that's just like a normal Mountain Dew. You want to know how many is uh, in the uh, Crystal Pepsi? 220. Is that about 250. right? 250. Two fifty. Two fifty. An extra thirty calories a normal Pepsi because it's thirty calories extra good. <laughs> <laughs> 30 ca- it's it's uh, translucent it has no color to it but the <laughs> the 30 extra calories actually eviscerate the caramel color they actually have uh the opposite of this as well called cool blast mountain dew cool blast i think yeah and it's like a melon a cool melon flavor like i think it's got some type of like menthol cooling effect on your throat when you drink it Wow, uh, and you can actually gargle with it, brush your teeth with it? <laughs> yeah, you know, you could. You could do yeah. that with, like, Coca-Cola and stuff. You might end up with fake teeth, but, you know, you could, you could, you do could it. clean your car battery uh, cables with Coca-Cola. I've seen the tutorials. I just hope this isn't, like, flaming Hot cheese flavored, because, like, usually flaming Hot has to do with, like, some type of, like, nacho cheese, Doritos, mm-hmm. yeah. flaming Hot Cheetos, Hot Fries. Well, yeah, hopefully, there you go. dude, hopefully it's nothing like space-flavored Coke. Have you had that? No, uh, Beth wants to try it, though. Tell it's Beth. Like candy flavored? No, tell Beth just to save herself some grief, because I had one. It just tastes like dirty mud puddle water. <laughs> it's disgusting. Yeah, it's, I, what Space flavor? They just made it up. And yeah, it's like speckled. It's Starlight. Yeah. Coca-Cola Starlight. Uh, it's like if an alien took a piss in a mud puddle and you just drank it right afterwards. Easy piss in can. Yeah, like E.T., the extraterrestrial, peed in a can, and they just sealed it up and then sold it. That's your space-flavored Coke right there. It's, it's disgusting. It's got a slight uh, Reese's Pieces flavor to it. <laughs> no, mean, whatever. No, if he ha- if E.T. or the alien had asparagus for dinner that <laughs> night, 
it would taste Brussels like sprouts. yeah, it would taste like whatever he ate, like the asparagus flavored, piss flavored space coke. Um, since we're I'm talking about the coffee either, the coffee cokes, those are horrible. Like, go ahead. Uh, since, well, like since we're talking about uh, weird flavors of stuff, I, I saw I saw one more thing. There's a Funyun flavored Mountain Dew. Did you see? Really? This? No, I, I don't know. know if it's, I, I don't know if it's real. I don't know if someone photoshopped it, so I didn't want to bring it up. But since we were already talking about this kind of stuff, I saw on Twitter that someone had posted a photo of them with a Funyun flavored Mountain Dew. I don't know if it's true, but it looks really interesting. If it is, I don't even know how that flavor would go because Funyuns are salty. They go good with Mountain Dew. Like yeah. That's a stoner, stoner snack. Yeah, salty and sweet. So I don't know how the actual saltiness would go with the Mountain Dew flavor. I don't know. I have no idea. But if it's real, I'd like I'd try it, I guess. There's a there's a flaming hot Cool Ranch Doritos. That one doesn't make any sense. I saw sense. that. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I don't know. It, it, <laughs> I think with the success of the the tacos, the Doritos Locos Tacos at Taco Bell, they're just like, okay, this worked. There's a market for this kind of weird stuff. Let's just go all in on this and see what happens. I kind of think that's, that's what's going on. That's how we got yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. We definitely jumped the shark, I think, with uh, flavors and stuff. Because I bought, the other day, there's a market across the street, and sometimes I'll go buy my, my girlfriend and myself stuff for our cheat day on Sunday. It's like where we don't count our calories. We kind of eat whatever we want. And uh, I bought this potato chip uh, Reese's peanut butter cups. So it had cracked up potato chips in the Reese's cups. It was pretty good. It was interesting. It had like, but it was almost like there's not enough chips. Like you could, you'd almost be better off if you just bought your own normal Reese's peanut butter cups and just put some Lay's in your mouth at the same time. <laughs> I think you'd be better off. Do you ever put chips in the gimmick. sandwich? Oh, yeah. Yeah, tuna fish sandwich or something like that. Yeah. Put the chips on there. Hell, yeah. Of course. Yeah, hey, yeah that's delicious. I was going to tell you, the fact that I'm holding this right here yeah. was proof that Ma that Crystal Pepsi was indeed coming back because the way I heard about it was last August, uh, the 2022 planner for Pepsi leaked online, like mm -hmm. a list of all the products they were releasing. And right before Crystal Pepsi and Crystal Pepsi Zero on it, there was flame and hot Mountain Dew, and I was like, "There's no way that's fake. It's got to be fake. There's no way they're gonna make a flame and hot Mountain Dew." I was like, "Damn it, Crystal Pepsi's not coming." But so the fact that this actually came out proves that that leak was for real. So, <laughs> Crystal Pepsi is like Pepsi's version of the McRib. They roll it out like every once in a while because they know it'll sell huge, and then they, they kind of it. tuck it away. Yeah, they should do it every summer. You know, three months out of the year. And then, like, High C should release Ecto Cooler around Halloween, you know? Like, seasonal. I, I don't think know why, they would make some good money. I don't know why they don't just bring Ecto Cooler back. And they should. there's also cereals from our childhood that should just be back. Like, Mr. T cereal was delicious. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how many people watching our podcast right now are old enough to remember that cereal, but it was delicious. And also, Smurf Berry Crunch. That Dinosaurs. was really good. Yeah, there. Yeah, there were some really good uh, cereals. Dinosaur uh, soup was good too, like Chef D, like the ABCs and one two threes. But they had dinosaurs. It had like a cheesy tomato sauce. That sounds uh, pretty good. Those were gone. Those those were around when I was a kid. Dude, and Crystal, you know, Crystal Pepsi would probably sell if they just kept it around. Uh, it's it's not nineteen ninety two anymore. You know, a lot of people like it. I think it would do better now. Well, I. Now that the 90s are back, like, everybody is dressing like it's the 90s again with their pants and, like, outfits and stuff. I think Crystal Clear Pepsi has a direct pathway to being successful at the market right now. Yeah, I should have kept this one sealed. It's like the 30th anniversary thing. It's like, it was, it was 1992 it came out. So. What, are you going to be buried with it? Just drink the son of a bitch and go get some more. Say uh, la vie, Josh. I've got a couple more, but all right. So I got a question for you. Yeah. Uh, since we are doing the action news, do we have a mean tweet or a mean comment and a nice comment? Yeah, uh, we do. We started that out. This is a new tradition on the show, and we're going to start out. Do you want the good news or the bad news, Josh? You know, this time I want to hear the good news first. Okay. All right. Nice comment of the week. And this was on uh, the brand new episode of Slash Tracks, Halloween 5. Uh, the Revenge of Michael Myers, Slash Tracks episode number 27, which was released full five days ago on the channel. Yeah. 
Yeah. So that's up to 11,000 views, and we've got a lot of really nice comments. We've got a lot of really mean comments. But of, <laughs> but of the nice comments, I, I think this was the nicest one. Uh, this is from Das, <laughs> das Dafwad. Das <laughs> Dafwad. Uh, he says, had me laughing all the way through, exclamation point. Awesome. Pretty good, Thank right? Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, yes. So, yeah. Uh, good comment of the week, and I saw that, and I had a little hit of dopamine go through my body and felt pretty good about it. But then, a few comments down the road, we encountered the mean comment of the week, <laughs> which was Marat Vikan. Another uh, great name to pronounce that I butchered again. Uh, it, sounds like, he, it sounds like a villain from history. He sounds like a Batman villain that, <laughs> like, when they use the Joker or the Penguin or the Riddler too much, they're like, let's get, uh, let's get Egghead or let's get... Uh, Marat the Con. Yeah, let's get one of these weirdo ra- random, you know, villains on the show just to break up the monotony of the Joker and Riddler being on every episode. Uh, so Marat says... Where does the funny start? Question mark. <laughs> maybe he just wanted the timestamp, you know. Yeah, he wanted he maybe yeah exactly. It, like we were dicks for not letting him know when we were going to start to be funny. Actually, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> there so was Marat, a lot. Yeah, thank you. There was a contender on one of them. One said, "Oh, how romantic a couple's riff." Yeah, I saw that. I saw that, and also I saw another comment that said, um, "Who's the top and who's the bottom?" <laughs> Who's the power bottom? Yeah, who's the power bottom? I was like, whoa. Um, and then I, when I read that, I was like, that's really interesting because um, you could say that about any show that has two hosts of the same right. sex. Yeah. Like, what? I don't like. It's not really. So, if you're commenting on us riffing, uh, can we comment on your comments <laughs> where you're trying to riff on our riff? You dick. Right. Not that. Not that great. Uh, <laughs> any show that has two hosts, you could use that for. Not very original. I mean, you, he should. They should have thrown that one out on Freddy's Revenge, and then at least it would have made sense, you know. Yeah, we got we got torn apart for the Freddy's Revenge slash tracks episode because we didn't go hard enough on the homosexual uh, aspects of the film. We said straight up we weren't going to because it, it's it's been done a thousand a hundred thousand times, and the movie is like we understand that it's the gayest horror movie ever made, but at the same time. You don't need to bring up the same thing over and over and over again. Like, try to be original a little bit with your content or with what you're saying. It's like, and yeah, we not, get it. And we're not bigots, you know. No. So there's a big we part like, of it, too. Yeah. We like people. We like every kind of people. We are very inclusive. So, if yeah. you don't like that, kick rocks. Bye-bye. Yeah, see you later. All right, so let's get into some fun facts after that. That mean tweet got me fired up. Let's do it. And if you know what? If we were a couple... You know, we'd probably just switch off. I don't have to be the power bottom every night. I generate a lot of power, I'm sure. <laughs> we just hey, we just flip a coin. Maybe I'd be the power bottom three times in a row, and maybe Josh would be. Who knows? Flip each uh, other. Yeah, that's what friends did, are for. You did say we, you did say we got ripped apart on that one video. Yeah. Uh, here's Which where one? the funny starts. By the way, here we go. Yeah, right now. Here's Forget everything else. This is timestamp right now. Uh, let's get into some fun facts. All right, Josh. During Prohibition uh, in the 1920s, vendors would sell grape concentrate bricks with warning labels that would say, do not, do not mix the concentrate with yeast, and do not leave it to ferment for 21 days, because if you do, it'll turn into wine. So don't do that. Don't they do were, it. They were, they were giving people tips, weren't they? I like that. They were finding out a way to get around the Prohibition by letting them know how they could make their own wine at home. It's like what we did to Master Evil that one time. We sent him that fake letter, you know, saying... What the hell? What are you talking about? Oh, shit. Uh, there was an episode... I, don't see, where I know, he, I know yeah. like where we wanted to see Ernest. Yeah. <laughs> do not... Whatever you do, you know, you should, it's, uh, you should really make these guys have to suffer through Ernest. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's obviously what was going on. That That's actually... I bet there was more of that than just that happening at the time. That that's hilarious. And then if they got in trouble, be like, "Hey, we're trying to warn people to protect them so they don't go to jail." You know? Yeah, I mean, we're we don't, we don't want this. them to do that. So we're telling them how to not do it. So yeah. by you even bringing that up, you're the one who's calling attention to it. So you're the bad guy. 
And all you viewers, whatever you do, do not join the Patreon because then we might have the money to have better quality equipment and put yeah. on better shows. Yeah, and if we have better equipment and better shows, we'll have less mean comments about people talking crap about our mics and our cameras and everything. And then who knows, you know, if we have success, you know, if we don't have success, maybe it won't go to our heads. So maybe that's the audience's way of keeping us, you know, level headed. Yeah. yeah, keeping us grounded. Um, got these Josh, amazing backgrounds, green screens. Yeah, yeah dude. Green screens. Next level, man. Uh, Josh, did you know that turkeys can reproduce without having sex? I did not know that. I yeah, me not. neither. Me neither. Are you sure there's not just a bunch of, like, female turkeys going to bed at night, you know, and, like, their husband just kind of slips in, slips out? And... I, when I heard that turkeys can reproduce without having sex, I guess turkeys are capable of having fertur- fertility clinics, and they have fertility turkey doctors that, because if they're not having sex, what, are they freezing their eggs? Like, what, they have doctors with highly intricate <laughs> turkey hospitals and uh, turkey labs, right? Is there a Jesus turkey? There's, yeah, there's a there's a there's the a, Smurf, turkey? a Smurfette turkey. There's one <laughs> female turkey, I guess. So I guess she she sped out all the Smurfs in town, right? Like she's she, well, she's all their mom. Gargamel actually made Smurfette. Did you know that? No, I did not. Gar- know that. Gargamel made Smurfette to infiltrate the Smurfs. So before Smurfette. Slash, slash of Hollicks, I'm breaking news right now from, like, 1984. Gargamel made Smurfette, and before he made her, there was only male Smurfs. Right? That's it. So they're just like turkeys. La, 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 la. The hell are they so happy about that? They're having sex, but still spreading yeah. all numbers. Yeah, what the hell are they? So they're just like, I told you not to open the door, Jokey, when I'm with my Smurf berries. For the love of God. All right, let the guy Smurf alone in his Smurf room, okay? Let him let him finish his Smurfing. What about the Snorks? Are they, can they produce without sex, or do they have to get it on? I don't know anything about the Snorks. I never caught the Snorks. I think it was only on for, like, half a season, wasn't it? <laughs> it was, I, I remember watching it, and the Raccoons. The Raccoons was a good one that I totally forgot about until the other day. The Snorks. Uh, it's like... The Snorks were like the Smurfs, but underwater. <laughs> yeah, the Snorks were like the Snorks were on around the same time that the Silverhawks were on. The Silverhawks, <laughs> and I remember watching like two episodes of that too. And like Silverhawks was uh, like kind of like a ripoff of Thundercats, almost. I think it was almost made by the same production company. It has, this, it has the same anime vibe to it, like the same feel. Um. So if you guys go back and watch like the intro to the Silverhawks and then Thundercats, it looks really similar. Um, I'd be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if it was the same company that animated those shows. We had a, we had great shows back then. We had one called David the Gnome, where the main character that you love throughout the whole series dies in this children's cartoon that was meant for young children. Him and his wife just lay down and die together at the end. So I don't versions. remember. I don't remember that at all. Was that the very last episode? That was the last episode. He, uh, that's how they, they become part of the forest. Uh, they, he just laid down and died. Wait a Mr. minute. So, <laughs> Mr. C. <laughs> so what happened to uh, Swift, the fox? Who was get, like? Oh, he was crying. He was crying at the end. Like He was well, sad he, watching it happen. No one's going to feed him. That's their pet. That's cra- I don't remember that at all. That's, and, look, you know, look it up. Dinosaurs, done. dinosaurs, the not the mama. You remember the dinosaurs? The big... yeah, that wasn't supposed to end that way. It was supposed they, to have another season. <laughs> dude, they died because like the ice age came, right? He caused it. He caused it. They were gonna yeah. have a, There was going to be a season where they where they reversed it uh, for a while, but they they got canceled. And that's kind of like how Alf ended. Alf ended with Alf being abducted by the FBI or whatever. Yeah, they made a TV movie to end. I remember it like went into a TV movie after that, right? Yeah, Where he goes I, home. I don't know if they did a movie or not. I, I guess if you're saying they did, they did. All they I remember did. was okay because if, if they if they hadn't, the show literally ended with Alf being taken in to be like cut up into pieces, and the family had no idea what to do to save him. That was the end of the show. <laughs> no, they they finished it with a TV movie where I'm almost positive. Uh, 
that they've resolved that probably because of what you're talking about. They're like little kids with their ALF TV tray and their ALF trading cards and their ALF dolls. Like, Lunch what bucks. the hell? Yeah, I had an ALF TV tray, like a little one. Uh, not that I would just sit on my lap, you know, and eat dinner. Uh, it was a great. I wish I still had that damn thing. It's probably worth like $100 now if it was mint. God, if I had my copy of the first episode of Freddy's Nightmares, it would have been worth money up until they put it on Screenbox a couple months ago. Yeah, Screenbox, like, Freddy's Nightmares, we've already kind of discussed it on the ep- yeah, uh, yeah. the previous episode. You go back and rewatch those episodes, and it's like, this, uh, I can see why this didn't work. <laughs> like, this is, uh, it seems like some of those plots were just scribbled on a cocktail napkin during happy hour at a, at a Marriott on, like, a Tuesday evening. Uh, they, they're just not good. They're bad. They're, they're bad. bad. They're not good. And there's not enough Freddy... Uh, there's just the pl- and I said this before, and I'm not going to go back. I'm not going to go into it really deeply, but it seems like a lot of the episodes don't have are, are they're not resolved. They don't know how to end the shows. They don't know how to end the episodes. It's, it's like really an weird. SNL sketch. They don't know how to end. Yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, they just don't know how to end it. It's weird. Um, so on that great point right there about how much Freddy's Nightmares actually sucks. Uh, did you know that a pig's orgasm can last as long as ninety minutes? Ninety minutes, Josh. Wow! Oh my! I did not know that. God, ninety minutes. He, you'd black out. You would black out, man. I saw a, I saw a fact that an orgasm, if they do a brain scan on you, uh, when you're having an orgasm, your brain looks exactly like your brain does when it's using heroin. Oh wow! Yeah, ninety minutes of just chasing the dragon, man. I wonder nice. how long. I wonder how many pigs like how how long they stay hot on heroin if they, if, they, if their orgasms are ninety minutes. Yeah, they're like this heroin sucks, man. I'd rather just go bust a nut real quick. I mean, <laughs> lasts way longer, and it's it's free. Don't pigs have? Aren't their penises like corkscrews? They're corkscrews. Yeah, they're corkscrews. Yeah. and aren't ducks? Don't ducks have weird penises too? Like uh, I haven't checked, but I know cats have little barbs on theirs, like uh, like kidney stone barbs, you know. So that's got that's why yeah, cats this, scream. Like a cactus, like that. Yeah, that's why the cat, the female cat, sounds like she's fucking dying every like in the alleyway every time they're having sex. Like <laughs> it's like rah, rah, rah. <laughs> <Wouldn't> you <laughs> uh, just dying. Wouldn't you? Good lord, man! Heathcliff and Garfield were up to no good, apparently. I was, on a med- I was on a medication one time that made it where I, if I had one, it would turn into two. But I can't imagine 90 minutes. I think I would have to clock out. I don't think I can handle that. Well, a pig could never go for the world record of orgasms like we talked about in a previous episode. That'd take too long. Your, fr- yeah. your first one takes 90 minutes. You're trying to break the record of, like, what was it, 26 or something for a man? <laughs> yeah, no way, dude. You're, you're already screwed because you're not even 70% done with your first one after yeah, the first yeah. hour. Pigs are out of the running on that. Do the pigs just completely drain of bodily fluids by the end of the 90 minutes? Like, are they just look like a, like a, like they look like that meme of the alien that's totally skinny and dying? <laughs> like, is that what a pig looks like after they have sex? Like, totally, totally drained of every liquid in their body? It would be wasted on that work? they can produce without, uh, without sex. And, you know, <laughs> turkeys are like, god damn it. Turkeys, man. Uh, that, hey, let's let's get into another fun fact. In 2007, a woman from New Zealand was actually fired for using caps lock too often in work emails. Well, people didn't like being yelled at. You know, it's it's a hostile work environment. I hate it when people use caps lock. Are like, and it's always someone that's and I, it's always someone that's older and it just learned how to text for the first time. It's like, I wasn't upset with you. It's like, well, I kind of thought you were because everything you said to me was in caps. Like, everything's well, in caps. I, I just don't know how to use it is all. I, I guess I hit the wrong button. Well, you were like saying, fuck you, I hate you, I wish you would die. So you got to understand the caps lock made that seem like you, you know, you, yeah. you were wanting me to die. And you, hated you had me. exclamation points at the end and you used proper punctuation. So I thought like that was legit. <laughs> Like, I didn't think it was a mistake. You even ended a PS saying, and this is not 
a, a mistake. I didn't hit the wrong button. I'm doing this on purpose. Yeah, I can't stand and you. I'm pissed. You're a fuck up. I definitely hit cap lock, so... Yeah. <laughs> Every, everybody knows somebody like that, though, that uses, uh, mid, uh, like, the wrong punctuation, uses caps lock. Um, and yeah. you you and I, you and I have had conversations where we're talking about something or I'll, like, think you're upset with me or you'll think that uh, I said something I didn't because text, you, you can't, the, like, in text or emails, you don't, you don't know the inflection or how they're saying it or yeah. if they're joking. So... You know, text text isn't great all the time. Sometimes you actually have to like actually talk to somebody to see what they mean. Have a connection with somebody, people. Yeah. At least a couple minutes a day. Yeah, like actually speak to somebody. I know people that and my brother is kind of one of these guys. He just never answers his phone. He'll text me a thousand texts, but he just will not answer his phone. Some people just do not want to talk on the phone anymore. Yeah. I See, I'm I'm kind of in that camp. I don't like texting either. If I, I didn't have kids, I probably, or if I didn't have a job that depending on it, th- that I had to have a phone for, I probably wouldn't even have like a real good phone, just some cheap, in case of an emergency. Mm-hmm. I just never cared for cell phones very much. Yeah. Like when I was a teenager, cell phones were just coming out. Like they'd been out before that, but it's like the big Zach Morris ones, but it was becoming a thing that more people had. Me and my friends and my siblings, we didn't want to take cell phones with us when we went out because that just meant our parents, you know. Can get a hold of you. Exactly. And now it's like teenagers can't live without them. And, you know, it's like back then we were trying. I threw a cell phone, me and my sister did, out of a car one night because our parents kept calling and bugging us. So we threw it out of the window into into a river uh, on a bridge we were driving over and said that we lost it. They were expensive phones too. Got to yeah. hope my parents are watching this. But, <laughs> your uh, parents are your parents are going to send you a freaking bill after this episode. You're grounded. <laughs> uh, I one time, I so I threw something out of a window one time. I went to a bowling tournament in Reno, and mm-hmm. my friend had like two CDs in his car. He actually drove us down there. Uh, he had next. It was the song was too close. It was like, yeah. ooh, you're dancing real close. Right? That <laughs> yeah. stupid song. Yeah. Uh, he that was he had like two CDs, and that was one of them. So the drive from Coos Bay, Oregon, where <laughs> I live, to Reno was like, because we went to Sacramento first to drop something off to somebody he knew in Sacramento. So the drive was like, God, seven, eight hours total. Ha- like 60% of the drive was listening to Next, and Next on that CD had one song that was like a hit. They were a one-hit wonder. It was the Too Close song. He put it in, and I said, hey, I want to switch the CD out. I pulled it out and just chucked it out the window somewhere in Sacramento <laughs> on the way back. That was it. He paid, And that was when CDs cost, like, $30. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is, like, 2003, 2004, man. He was pissed. But I yeah. had it. I wasn't doing it anymore. It was that song. Yeah, I, he's, I was like, hey, can I eject that? I want to switch the CD out <laughs> real quick. I just eject it out and just... Fling, like, fling that fucker right out the window and on to the next one. I remember uh, when I, when cassette tapes were still sold brand new, they'd be like little bitty tapes, but like this big old long handle plastic thing that you'd, like a handle to carry it. It's like and you, they'd have to tape. take it off at the counter. They'd have <laughs> like a chastity belt key to get that thing off. And light bulbs still come in like little thin cardboard packages. You know, like the most breakable, easiest thing to break comes in thin cardboard, but like tapes and shit and CDs and movies, you got to take like 10 different things off of it to get it open. Uh, hey, dude, <laughs> when, when we were kids, I remember buying tapes and like you'd want to listen to a certain song and you couldn't like skip ahead like a CD. You couldn't go like, I'm going to listen to track three over and over again or hit repeat. You'd have to master rewind or fast forward correctly. And I could never time it just right so you're you'd have to listen to the ass end of some song you didn't want to listen to or the beginning of a song you didn't want to listen to or whatever but and i also remember like if because <laughs> there was no internet really in the early 90s so if we wanted to like mixtapes were big right so if you wanted to listen to a song again because you know if the radio played it you had to get your radio like your stereo ready to record that son of a bitch and hit record as soon as the song came on so a lot of those mixtapes i made had half the song or <laughs> and whatever. commercials 
<laughs> yeah, commercials or whatever. It's like, come, come on the... down to Crazy Kyle's Auto. <laughs> yeah, wacky, waveable, arm-flailing tube man. Uh, let's get into uh, the last fun fact of episode number six. What do you say? Last one. Yeah, la- and then we'll get into another, to- another uh, topic. Okay. All right, this is the last fun fact. Uh, Snake Island is an island off the coast of Brazil that's estimated to have one snake per every square meter. It's home to the extremely deadly and also highly endangered Golden Lancehead Viper. This island is completely off limits to humans. Would you yeah. want to go to Snake Island? No, no. I, I think humans evicted themselves from that island. There's a spider island. Uh, I've seen videos of it, like where they're, they, it, like the entire ground moves because it's yeah. just covered with spiders, right? Billy the Exterminator or whatever went to one little island that was... I don't think it was the Spider Island, but he called it Spider Island. It was infested with brown recluses. And, like, this person had a summer home there, and they wanted it exterminated. He got bit by, like, four of them. And those things fuck you up, you know? Your skin skin will start rotting. It dies. It's like that part of your body's dead where it bites you. And my dad was bit by one, like, 20 years ago, and to this day... Every couple of years, a hole will rot in his hand where he got bit. Like, it still happens two what? decades later. Yeah, because the skin never fully heals in some cases because it dies. The skin is completely, it's necrosis. But, yeah, like, he went to this house, and they were just hanging everywhere. They were on the floor, hanging from the ceiling. Uh, they were on the ground outside. So, Snake Island, I'm not as, I'm not as scared of snakes as I am... I'm not really arachnophobic. I'm bite-aphobic. I don't want to be yeah. bit by a brown re- I've seen what happens with a brown recluse bite. Yeah, yeah I've yeah. seen how sick people get. I've seen somebody get bit by a black widow, and, like, they couldn't stand up straight for, like, two days because they were cramping and hurting so bad. It, like, like they couldn't, st- like, they were cramping, even with medication and stuff. Like, little bitty fucking spiders, their bite scares me. Snakes, I can see them coming. So I'm not as scared of them. But what are you going to do not- on Snake Island? You're going to see them coming, and then you're going to run away into more snakes. That's- yeah, so I don't want to go there. I- I'm just saying, like, if I if somebody said you're going to Snake Island or you're going to Spider Island, one or the other, I'd be like, can I go to Shoot Me in the Head Island? They'd yeah, can no. I go to Death Island, please? They'd say no, and I'd probably have to go to Snake Island. Would you go to Spider Island or Snake Island if you had to go? I, I would probably go to Snake Island because I... Spider Island, you're not getting away from those, man. They're they'll get you. They can climb on the walls. Uh, they can jump. There's. Have you seen some of the spiders that can jump? Oh, like yeah. legit from branch to branch. They're terrifying. Some snakes though can like almost jump. Right? There's jumping snakes. Oh yeah, yeah. There's uh, they can like leap. Yeah. And they can spring up in the air. Yeah. In the comment section, yeah. let us know if you if you if you had to choose, would you go to Snake Island or Spider Island? And while you're considering that, the funny's going to stop for a second because I got something to say to everybody. And this is a true fact. You can look it up. There is always a spider within six feet of your location. No matter where you are, there is a spider six feet away from you. Don't are forget you sh- that. Hey, your dad. So you said you said your dad. You said your dad. His skin is still like you know, starts dying again every once in a while, years and years later. Yep. Are you sure that's not from the spider bite and possibly from the financial ruin that you brought upon your household by throwing the cell phone in the lake? Like, he, he, did, he, he doesn't know that you did it, but it's physically manifesting in his actual health. <laughs> like, universe is telling him, like, your son is a piece of garbage and wanted right. to bring the house of LaRue down. Is that what you're telling him? He doesn't know, though. If he watches this episode, if he's anything like my father, he doesn't even know that I have a show. So, you're good. <laughs> I don't you're think fine. my dad knows either. Yeah. I think I told him, but if he found out, he'd be like, oh, you know. I That's told him nice. I, I was like, Dad, my channel's blowing up. we got like 17,000 subscribers on it. He's like, "You? what do you mean a channel? I was like, I told you about... Never mind. Never mind. He's like, That's <laughs> it's, it's a YouTube thing. <laughs> yeah, he's like, That's great. Uh, what day is it? <laughs> no, yeah. I'm kidding. That's my dad, not your dad. My dad's is like, it, is it Wednesday? What day is it? 
My dad's like, that's nice, son. Now shut the fuck up. My hand's rotting. I gotta go get this clean now. <laughs> yeah, it's rotting in the form of a cell phone from the <laughs> early 90s. It, like, no. Hey, um, let's move in to... <laughs> Let's move into sports. Let's get into the sports. Awesome. Huh? That's my favorite right. segment. I love it. All See, right. I'm not a horrible person like people yeah. call in the comments. Well, we're getting into sports right now. And uh, the NBA playoffs are in full swing right now, Josh. And we're, we're approaching the end of round one. And we're going to be moving into round two. The Phoenix Suns have a player by the name of Jay Crowder. And he's a starting forward for the team. And the Suns are actually pretty good. They actually went to the finals last year. So they went all the way to the championship round last year. Jay Crowder's a starter on this team. He's a big-time contributor. But last week, maybe not so much. In a playoff game, uh, Jay Crowder played 28 minutes, okay? So he played like 70%, maybe 65% of the entire game. Yeah. He finished with one point, one rebound, one assist, and one block. He basically ran. He basically ran around with his hands in his pockets the entire game. He was consistent, though. Yeah, he was one, 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 one. He seriously was just doing cardio at that point, just running around, taking up space. Man, he did almost nothing. He's like, shit. I'm still a millionaire, regardless. So fuck how it. Hell, how do you do that? Like, how do you only like? How do you, in 28 minutes of action, how, how did you only get one assist? You, you probably had the ball in your hands a lot more than once. The thing that boggles my mind is how did he only get one rebound? Because the ball is going to bounce to you whether you're in position sometimes or not. Like, you're going to get a lucky couple rebounds. He got one. What was his name minutes. again? Jay Crowder. Oh, dude. He actually has a rare blood condition. Mm-hmm. And earlier that day, they had to uh, give him uh, a transfusion, and all he had was yeah. pig's blood. And then he got <laughs> laid right before the game. Yeah. So that's why he, he couldn't concentrate on the game because he was having a 90-minute orgasm. The whole game, huh? The whole game. You know, orgasm. he tried his best. but The, the, the 28 minutes played. the twenty eight minutes he played was actually only like a third almost of the <laughs> initial orgasm. So, yeah, he yeah. was really distracted. I've never tried to play sports while having an orgasm. I'm sure it's probably really hard. <laughs> I'm sure it is hard. Yeah, I'm sure it's really hard both ways, but I'm sure it's very <laughs> difficult to focus on a sports, uh, a sporting game when you're having an orgasm. Uh, I'll, I'll give you that, Josh. Or yeah. focus on a sports story when you have me as a co-host. Yeah, next level, next level sports uh, drop right there, Josh. That was fantastic. Um, let's get into the second sports story of the night. Oh. Cleveland Browns quarterback Baker Mayfield recently made a comment on fans booing him during games. <laughs> he says, okay. he said, and I quote, I would love to show up to somebody's cubicle and boo the shit out of them and watch them crumble. <laughs> so he, 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 Baker Mayfield would like to show up to these fans' jobs and just start booing them uh, and see how they react to it. What are your thoughts like us, on this, Josh? Like us tracking down the bad comment people, you know? Here's where the funny starts, bitch, you know? <laughs> no, we give them awards, dude. We don't We don't retaliate. We, we award them. Man, he ought to embrace it and become just, you know, a heel sports man, you know? Like when I was in wrestling. Yes, I'm going to go back and talk about wrestling just for a second, okay? okay. Very, bigly, very bigly part of my life. Um, here's, your, here's your truth, truth social moment of the night. Here's, there we go. Here's, uh, here's my truth post. It's there very, we go. Even though I run truth social, I do not have an account. Okay, because Elon Musk is going to give me my Twitter back. I know he's going to because he bought it. Okay. Um, in wrestling, of course, when you're a heel, you want to be you want to be booed. Yeah. You know? And uh, by the way, there's a show called Hills on Stars. You gotta check it out. It's about an indie company. Two brothers run it. Uh, the guy that played Green Arrow is on it, and he's got like a lot of respect for the business. A lot of real independent wrestlers work on the show, mm-hmm. and it's pretty cool. You gotta check it out. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's called Heels. Um, anyways, I was a heel wrestler. I started out as a face, a baby face, which in wrestling is the good guy, and I just couldn't pull off the whole "Come on, yeah," you know, like kissing the crowd's butt thing. 
So my hometown was pretty much booing me one night because I was trying so hard to be a good guy. I turned heel, and from that day forward, I was a bad guy. But when I did that, I couldn't sell any merchandise, right? Because bad guys, nobody wants their shit. And people sung to my music. I had this theme song that was like, na 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 na, hey hey, goodbye. But I found this this uh, song from Mexico where it was like, na 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 na, na 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 na, hey hey hey, VIP. And then it would like be Mexic, uh, Spanish words I didn't understand, but that's how it started. Mm-hmm. So I took that and put it in front of my theme song. And fans started singing along to that, saying, hey, 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 you suck, instead of VIP. So I had, I, made a, I had a bunch of VIP shirts made. It looked like the NWO logo, but it was red and said VIP. And they weren't selling, because I was a hill. So I went to, a, uh, to the screen printer, and I had sucks added to the bottom, where it looked like it had been spray-painted on there. Yeah, and I went and, and I put the I put, I put them for sale at the Babyface table, and they sold more than the top Babyface's merchandise sold. I made hundreds a night selling VIP suck shirts, and these these hills came up to me, like, dude, why would you do that? Why would you say that you suck and put that on your shirts? It's like because I'm playing a bad guy and I like money, and I don't. <laughs> you know, it's it's it's. <clears throat> Some, if you're playing a bad guy, it's like they didn't think of this. Like, yeah. why was I the first indie guy to think of anti-merchandise? There, you shouldn't have an ego if you're... This guy is getting booed, and he wants to go out and boo the fans. I mean, just embrace that shit, man. I know it's not wrestling, but sports, there's, there's still faces and there's heels. I hear it all the time. I can't name any names, but there's people that love this player... And hate this player. There's LeBron. heroes and villains. Yeah. So he ought to just embrace it because it's like in wrestling. You either want to be getting cheered or you want to be getting booed. But if there, if you're not getting either, that's when you have a problem. Yeah, so that's X X Pac yeah. Heat. Nobody cares. Like, yeah, if, just... he, if if this guy you're talking about is getting booed that much, that's people putting forth interest in him. You know, he's mm-hmm. He's not just a nobody. He ought to embrace that shit and grow the fuck up. That's what I was getting at, you know. Drop the ego, embrace being that, and just go run with it. It's good. Obviously, he's gotten people's attention. It's it might not be getting worshipped like he wants, but it's better than not getting any reaction from the crowd at all. Well, let's get Baker Mayfield on the show. We actually have Baker Mayfield here right now. Oh. <laughs> No, just uh, yeah, oh, no, he there can, he was. Shit, he can definitely take like Kobe Bryant when he had his situation where he was being accused of sexual assault in Colorado. That's when he created the Black Mamba. He had the like he just like I'm gonna be a killer on the court. This is a true thing. He was a huge fan favorite, Kobe Bryant. All of a sudden, everybody hates him. He embraced it, and at the end of it, came out more popular than he ever was before by doing exactly what you said he should do. That's that's what I'm saying. Embrace it because you've got the crowd in your hand. Yeah, yeah you know? you're right. I, I've been in public before, back when I was wrestling, and I had people yell at me in a grocery store before in, in Walmart, VIP, VIP sucks, you know? And I just smiled because it's like I did it, you know? I'm laying you're in the like- ring. When I, one of my greatest nights in wrestling, I got beat. And it's my greatest moment ever in wrestling. And I'm not trying to fill up this the episode with it, but you might be interested in this. I had won the main belt in a tournament for this company I was working for. And I was I was a really I was one of the top hills. I mean the people sung to my music like they sing to it, Kurt Angles, you know? And they hated the fact that I cheated my way through this tournament and won the belt. And for six months I was the champion, and people would come out like every other week. We did a show every two weeks, and they would hope and pray that I would lose. They would tell me, you're going to lose tonight. You're going to lose the belt. And every time, I'd find some way to weasel my way into winning it, you know, keeping it. And uh, the night I lost it was against this big dude, big muscled-up dude. He actually wrestled like a Sunday night heat and shit before named Brandon Groom. And 
I talked to him in the locker room, and I was like, man, I, I would never ask you to lay down for me because you've got so much more experience and you're so much bigger than me, uh, but I've got this idea. And I ran it past him, and I'm going to tell you that in a second. And this guy who had been in the business way longer than me said, wow, you've got a great mind for wrestling. Let's do it. And he agreed to take a, a three count from me. Here's what I did. I, for six months, the crowd was wanting to see me lose the belt, right? So I finally lost it that night. And as soon as I lost it, and I mean, the crowd erupted. They finally, this little son of a bitch, little skinny cheating son of a bitch lost the belt. I get on the microphone and pull in our commissioner of the company and say that uh, I had set up a rematch clause. And he's looking at it. While he's looking at it, my dad was my manager at the time, took a chain and hit the big guy in the back of the head. Didn't knock him out, but he's like stumbling. And the, and the commissioner was like, and he didn't see it. The referee didn't see it. And he's like, yeah, he gets a rematch. Ring the bell. The bell rang. I gave the guy the RKO type move that I did, which was a finisher. And I won the belt back immediately. And people were losing their shit, throwing shit in. They were probably never going to come to a show again. That's how pissed they were. Mm-hmm. That, you know, I pulled the rug out. From the <clears throat> but here's where my plan that I talked to him came in. I start leaving the ring with the belt. Everybody, There's some people that are just pissed, throwing their shit away, getting ready to leave. And as I'm going into the locker room, every face, every baby face comes out, picks me up, throws me back in the ring, and Brandon Groom says, okay, my rematch clause kicks in. And he picks me up, does his finisher, like hardcore, which is like spinning around a bunch, and it's like a, it's a, it's a press slam. Pins me, and the crowd was like, some the people that were leaving like ran back in, and they counted out loud, one, two, three, with the rep, you know. And I laid there for like 10 minutes, not moving. I really sold the shit out of it and he, while he celebrated winning. Um, that was my greatest moment, and it was losing because I had a whole crowd in the palm of my hand. You know, like, mm-hmm. we pulled the rug out from underneath them. They, they waited six months yeah. to see me destroyed. They got their wish, and then I got it back immediately, which pissed them off worse than anything in the six months, which made him beating me again an even better uh, moment. You know what I mean? It, it made it ten times bigger by doing it that way, and that's why he agreed to lay down uh, for a three count for me. Yeah, and uh, you know, my point was embrace the heat, man. Uh, sorry, I had I got a little sentimental there talking to my wrestling career. But that was my greatest moment in wrestling, and I didn't even win that night. I lost that night. I lost the belt that night. Uh, you know, but uh, one of my biggest heroes was Roddy Piper. And if you're a good enough heel, you don't need a belt. And it's not about winning or losing. It's it's it's. It's what you're doing there, you know, and, and we, we had that we had that crowd. And uh, it's just I just wanted to say when it comes to just embracing the heat, my best moment is when I is a night that I lost. So, yeah, if the, if the guy's getting that much attention to the point that he's getting booed so much that he wants to go and be petty and boo people at their jobs, why not just embrace that heat he's getting and ride that attention all the way to the top? You know, what what he should do is like what I do when people are negative towards me or when people uh, say I can't do something or if they make a snide comment like what I do <clears throat> is I use it as motivation intrinsically. And then I'm kind of like, OK, well, I'll show you like you'll see. And if we don't talk anymore or if you're we're not living in the same city anymore, you're going to see that I'm doing exactly what you said I couldn't do. I'll make I'll well, I will let you know somehow you'll see I'm doing exactly what you told me I couldn't do. So there's two different avenues he could go down, and either one is a better choice than what he's saying right now. He's he doesn't need to go to somebody's cubicle. He needs to go He needs to go make money from it, or he needs to get better from it, or both. 100%. Research. Yeah. Um, since we since we start talking about wrestling, let's get into uh, the wrestling portion Sorry. of the show. No, no, we did. Good segue. Uh, so I saw Josh. Uh, I like to talk, I look, I keep an eye on graded VHS stuff. I've talked about it in the past. 
Um, I saw that a copy of Royal Rumble 92, a graded copy, it's like an 8, so it's not perfect, but it's pretty good, uh, recently sold for $1,914.99. So somebody um, really wanted to watch Ric Flair in the Royal Rumble. Go the distance. That bad. Wanted to go the distance. Um, no, I just think that I think it's so funny because I see people make comments about like, oh, VHS just junk. You can go to Goodwill, blah blah blah. It's like, well, kinda. Like, but if you have a good eye, you definitely need to like. If you see something that looks like it's in pretty good shape or still wrapped, I don't know how much that we can stress that you should probably buy it. Just, I mean, you might you might hit the lottery. You don't know. I mean, I think that we should end the show right now and go <laughs> garage sailing. I think that we should end the episode right now and go garage sailing. Slash tracks pickers. Yeah, yeah. just uh, slash. <laughs> slash tracks pickers. Everybody. God, every American Pickers episode, that freaking Frank Fritz. Now I'm going to bundle it. Can I bundle it? Can I take this and that? I'm a can guy. I like oil cans. Can I bundle this shit? It's like, no, I want to sell you this. I don't want to sell you. I want this price. I don't want to sell eight other items and then the one thing you want and then pay less. Like, get or the less. Person's, or the person's yeah. like, sir, I've told you three times. I'm just the toll booth worker. And I need $1.75. <laughs> yeah, we can't negotiate. Like, this is not a neg- <laughs> Like, this is your taxes, Frank Fritz. You owe... 20% of what you grossed for the year. This isn't negotiable. Like, I'm sorry. I know you like oil cans. That has nothing to do with the federal government. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, you know, I looked up uh, VHS. I think the next, like, uh, records are back in, you know, they're real hot. Like, you can go yeah, buy record are. players. Vinyl. You can buy vinyl. I think VHS is going to make a comeback where VCRs are going to be sold again. Yeah. Because a lot of people prefer that. I prefer that. Discs, so many DVDs, they scratch so easy. They they go bad after, but VHS. I still have VHS tapes that work perfectly fine, you know, from like thirty from, forty years ago. Yeah, from and, like and, the mid eighties, early eighties, yeah. man. And you always get that little tracking at the beginning, but that's part of the enjoyment, you know. It's kind of like how vinyl sounds better. Um, but like I, I I was looking up the Hulkamania tapes. I wanted to get Hulkamania one through five or what? I think it was Hulkamania one, two, three, four, and then forever or whatever. Uh, I yeah. wanted those tapes because as a kid, I loved them. And I looked them up, and they were fucking expensive. Yeah, they're uh, really expensive. Because, um, like, short prints, uh, rarity, like, because a Coliseum Home Video sometimes wouldn't release it nationwide. Sometimes they'd only do it regionally. Um, or from some school stores only. Yeah, you, so you'd have to... Like, I had a friend who, there was a video store that closed in our hometown, and he went down, like, the first day and bought almost every wrestling tape. I was so jealous. I didn't even know that you could do that. I, and he was like, oh, yeah, I got, like, everything. He got, like, Rampage 92, which was this random battle royal they had. It was like a house show in London. Oh, and Davy Boy, yeah, yeah, Davy Boy Smith won it, obviously, because he was, like, huge in London. Um, he won this random battle royal, and they didn't even have. It wasn't a royal rumble; it was a battle royal. So all thirty men started in the ring. Yeah, and then there was a. There was even they didn't even have thirty guys that were like names in there. They had like jobbers in there with them. It was <laughs> the like weirdest. World War III. <laughs> yeah, it was the weirdest battle royal I've ever. You mean World War Three, where it's like they have sixty guys and three rings? Ninety, sixty or ninety or whatever. Yeah, yeah sixty, sixty guys, sixty guys. And, like, 25 of them are people you know, and 35 are just, like, local indie wrestlers and shit, or, or wrestlers, you know. From New Japan ass. or Mexico or something, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh, the here, comes, here comes Disco Inferno. Like, he's got a real real shot at winning the world championship tonight. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Sure you do. Um, the, second, the second wrestling story of the night is actually one of my favorite wrestling angles they ever did for Raw. Um, and it was just like a one-off thing. 24, yeah. 24 years ago today, Degeneration X actually attempted to invade a taping, a live taping of WCW Monday Nitro on, oh, an, yeah. army, on, an, on an army jeep. They tried to drive straight into the building, which was the Norfolk Scope in Virginia. They almost got in. They seriously almost drove this Jeep in. They got X Pac on the back. They've got Billy Gunn. They got Road Dog, China, Triple H. A couple of the guys had like branches on their army helmets. Like they they were in camo, yeah. uh, fake guns. 
they tried to drive this DX Jeep into the Norfolk Scope, you know, building, and right before they got in, the gate closed. Yeah. Um, they were saying, let, let Kevin and Scott go. Let them yeah. go. <laughs> let, let my people go. Let, let, let Scott Hall and Kevin Nash free. Set them free. The sign was flashing free tickets. Called this number. Yeah, <laughs> like they were papering. They were papering the crowd. Come and get the free tickets that WCW has to hand out to fill their arena. But then again, I was a huge WCW fan then, so that pissed me off. I, I, I stuck with WCW all the way until the end. And I tried so hard, but when Scott WCW Steiner... WCW was getting bad at the end Scott there, Scott Steiner was beating up a, a plastic duck and getting on the microphone and saying, switch to WWF because WCW sucks. Dude. I was like, nah, I don't think anybody's running this anymore. <laughs> Vince Russo, single-handed, and him and Ed Ferrara, the writers uh, who were, like, claimed responsibility for the Attitude Era, went to WCW and just destroyed WCW's product. They are a Vince huge reason... Sent- I think Vince sent him there to do that. I really do. To this day, I think Vince sent Russo there. He never got... Well, I would I would be inclined to believe you because it was that bad when he went to WCW, but he never got a job again with WWE. Like, he's never been involved with them in any capacity since. Like, had he got hired back, I would maybe I that's believe it. Maybe they didn't want to, you know make it obvious so they just broke ties with him after that man and they paid him good ed ferrara did this thing where he made fun of uh jim ross jim ross's uh bell's palsy and that i was like i was like that is sickening even at the, even as a teenager i was like that is so that's just yeah, that's wrong super, super classy move like ed ferrara is a piece of shit uh yeah i don't like ed ferrara and you don't so if ed ferrara ever wants to come on the podcast uh fuck you ed ferrara <laughs> I, and if you have a comment about that in the comments, Ed Ferrara, go ahead and leave one. Mark Madden, uh, I didn't like him either. Like He was just such a mark to be a ring announcer. I'm like, why are they letting like a super mark run, be a commentator on a wrestling they probably, show? probably just paid him in tickets. Like they, they probably, He probably didn't have a salary. They're like, hey, man, you really like the product? Gotcha. Want a job? Yeah, it will pay you in the arena food, and you can actually commentate on the product, man. We're not paying you anything, okay? And we're also putting the title on David Arquette tonight. What do you think about that? Dude, I was at the pay-per-view where David Arquette lost the world title in the triple triple tiered cage. The triple cage, yeah, the triple yeah. tiered cage. I was there for that. When Canyon got thrown off, like I told you before, we saw them setting up the fake uh, section of the ramp. Yeah. And, like, they had one of those things that was, like, the, side, the, the height of the ring that they walked to the ring they for that setup, and we saw them putting in a, a different kind of piece that looked different and then yeah. covering it. So we knew something was going to go down. The thing is, he almost missed it by, like, that much. He came oh, that man. close to dying uh, that night. Not so good. we thought he was really hurt. We thought he missed it. Um, but, yeah, yeah, I was there when David Arquette lost the belt, man. Uh, Bobby Heenan's hot mic thing one night, uh, I think it was on Raw, uh, he, he thought his mic was off, and he's like, this is the worst one we've ever done. Like... <laughs> This is this is this is the worst one. One night, Mike uh, uh, Tony Schiavone said, "This is what happens when you fuck with the NWO," uh, and it didn't get bleeped. He or said anything. the F word. Yeah, they, it was it was when they had the silver, the NWO two thousand. Yeah. Uh, uh, Terry Funk was getting beat up by them and thrown in the trunk of a car, and as they drove away, uh, Kevin Your Nash was a whore. Car. He's waving, and uh, Tony Schiavone's like, "That's what hap- That's what you get for fucking the NWO." And I was like, oh. what? Wow. <laughs> what? They had a lot of slip-ups with uh, stuff like that. When Booker T said the N-word to Hulk Hogan, <laughs> they, they were, no, who was running the far, who was running the show back then? Like, they. What about the, what about the Shockmaster tripping? Oh, was that, <laughs> that was because Dusty, time, Dusty Rhodes put that freaking Stormtrooper, bedazzled Stormtrooper helmet <laughs> on him. He couldn't see out of it. Did so you know that was Typhoon? That was, yeah, it was Fred Ottman. It was Tugboat. It was Tugboat, yeah. Yeah, so he, like, Dusty has him put this helmet on that he can't see out of, and he goes through, the, he busts through the door, and didn't he trip over the the they thing on the ground? Beam, they put a beam on the bottom of the wall. It was supposed yeah. to be a fake wall, but they put a board on the bottom, and he, he yeah. stepped right into it. And he grabs his <laughs> helmet, and he's trying to, like, adjust it. That was like when, uh, uh, oh my goodness, they... 
I can't remember his name now. Uh, Titus O'Neil. When he's at yeah, that he's battle so royal, sad. yeah, overseas, and he's <laughs> running to the ring, and he trips and slides like a baseball player under the mat. That, those are the two things I think of. I was like, there's another Shockmaster moment for old Titus. Horrible. Hey, Christian's TV show, they made a joke out of that, and they said, here's some footage you didn't see of that. And, and like, when he slides underneath the ring, Edge and Christian are already down there. Yeah. And they're like, hey, hey, what's up, man? Thanks for dropping by. <laughs> oh, like they were already, they edited, like they were already down there. That's yeah. funny. Um, um, so, hey, since we brought up David Arquette, that's a perfect segue to get into our horror news, because we're going to talk about his sibling. Okay. Uh, we're going to talk about Patricia Arquette for a second. Okay. Um, Pat- Patricia Arquette uh, was in Dream Warriors, so Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors. Uh, and by the way, we've actually interviewed Ira Hyden, who was a dream warrior. So if you guys want to check that out, it's, uh, in the getting sidetracked on the channel here. So you can check that out. Uh, but anyway, so Patricia Arquette never, ever has really publicly spoken about her role in Nightmare on Elm Street 3. It was her first acting role in a major motion picture ever. Um, she actually was, uh, pretty complimentary about it. She said a lot of really positive things. Uh, she had mentioned that her dressing room was actually not really a dressing room. It was just, like, they put up, like, a piece of, like, drywall, and they all have, like, a cot in part of, like, the hot, the old hospital, you know, hospital that they filmed in. So they didn't have, like, a couch or nice things in their room. They just had, like, an old cot in a scary hospital with a piece of drywall separating the rooms. She said she got along really well with Heather Langenkamp and, like, all the co-stars and stuff. But she said something that was really interesting. Uh, she made a comment that for the Dokken Dream Warriors video, which is uh, like based on Dream Warriors, the movie, it was the theme song for the movie. She was paid more to be in the video than she was to be in the actual movie. Wow. Yeah. It's awesome. That's, that, well, it's awesome and kind of sad at the same time. I don't even know how that works out like that. Because a lot of people don't realize this. They- it's kind of like how we were able to show uh, Not More on Elm Street 2, the, the actual movie on our yeah. episode of Slash Tracks. The Elm Street movies were not big budget Hollywood films. They were independent films. Every sequel, sequel was an independent film. So they didn't have to pay the same as like a Hollywood film mm-hmm. or whatever. They paid the bare minimum. Somehow, they their sequels are independent and they don't fall under the same guidelines and stuff is like major motion uh, pictures at that time so that's probably how they got away with paying her less uh, yeah. was that it was an indie film so she might have made actual scale like realistic scale because docking was probably like a real production exactly it wasn't okay. it, yeah the movie itself was just an indie indie production and they had different uh, stuff i believe that's what they do with the Power Rangers. Uh, Haim, Haim Saban, who's the guy who like created the Power Rangers, he they get paid nothing. The kids that play the Power Rangers because they're not actual like they're not in union. That's uh, go ahead. I was gonna say I've got a news story about Power Rangers for all of our Power Ranger fans out there. Uh, yeah, everybody knows Hasbro bought Power Rangers from Haim Saban, Saban a couple years ago. Uh, they were they were finishing up what Japanese footage that they had left planned, which is the season that's airing right now, or just finished. They had two seasons of it, Dino Morphers or something. Anyways, after that, there's no more Japanese footage that's ever going to be used from that from the Super Sentai series. All that's going to be over, and they're producing like three or four different shows for Netflix and movies. Uh, one of the shows will be, like like the red shows we know, uh, one of them is going to be an adult Power Ranger show for adults. And one of them is produced by David Yost, uh, who played Billy Cranston, the Blue Ranger, in the original Power Ranger series. And it's going to be about the original team having to get back together. It's going to be an eight-episode limited series called The Power Grid or something like that. And uh, it's going to be it's going to be more for adults as well. It's going to be kind of dark and stuff. The old team has to, as forty year olds, I guess, uh, yeah. power back up to save the world. Uh, I don't know how they're going to cover Trini, uh, but Tommy, Billy, Jason, Kimberly, everybody signed on for it. They're uh, actually making this. I heard about yeah, this. They're, they're actually, actually making this. Yeah, and That's Hasbro excellent. is like 
Hasbro has got all these plans, uh, but the Super Sentai days are over, it looks like, and it's all going to be original, new content, higher budget. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be on Netflix, uh, maybe on Nickelodeon or something. And there's a new Power Ranger movie coming out as well to theaters in the next year or so. I like the the one they did in 2017. Uh, I felt like they spent too long on the backstory, and we only got like 15 minutes of action on it. But if they had been given a chance to make a sequel, I think that it would have kicked ass. They could have brought in Lord Zed, uh, Tommy. Uh, you know, Brian Cranston was a great. And what's so funny about him being Zordon is Brian Cranston used to make money uh, because he didn't have a lot of acting gigs. He did commercials, and he voiced monsters on the original, like, first yeah. three seasons of Power Rangers. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was he was friends with some of the production. That's why Billy, uh, the character Billy's last name is Cranston. Because it was based off uh, Walter White. On the huh? original series. Yeah, they, they were... Uh, 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 oh my god, Brian Cranston uh, was friends with uh, one of the writers and they just wrote in uh, Billy Cranston is the name. Nice. Uh, so it's, I don't know, I'm, I'm, ex- I'm excited to see what Hasbro does with like the adult themed ones uh, for the people that grew up with the show. So that's going to be cool. But yeah, the Super Sentai stuff is over so maybe all these actors will start getting paid better than what you were saying because that's the truth. They've been getting screwed for years. Um... So, speaking of getting screwed, uh, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen Scream 5, uh, <laughs> David Arquette dies, uh, Dewey dies in Scream 5, okay? And this is the last horror story of the evening. Uh, David Arquette was recently asked if he was going to be returning to Scream 6, but <laughs> Dewey's, Dewey's dead. And yeah. David Arquette gave this response. He said, you never know. So is David Arquette going to return as like a vision or like a memory or like a, a flashback or could he possibly not be dead? But he didn't say <laughs> he didn't say emphatically. No, <laughs> I can just see him. They're like, he's in a body bag, you know, like being carried away. His guts are hanging out and Tom goes up. I'm good. <laughs> part one or whatever. I'm good. I'm OK. I'm OK, Sid. I got yeah. this. I'm good. They're just going to put back in. Yeah, they're just going to put my. That's good. Wow. So, yeah, David Arquette might not actually be dead. So, uh, let's get into. Yeah. Let's get into some headlines to end the show. What do you think? Let's talk about some headlines. Get our heads itching. All right. Oh, headlines. Yeah, we'll do headlines. headlines. This is a big personal story for me, Josh. This one is huge. You ready for this? All right. Uh, Taco Bell has announced the comeback of the Mexican pizza. It's officially coming back to stores on May 19th. Are you going to go stock up? Put them Hell in yes, I am. Hell yes, I Is am. The Mexican pizza... Pepsi? Dude, Mexican pizza has been a staple item for Alex Vanover since he was about four. And when they took it away, it was a very dark day in my household. So the fact that the Mexican pizza is coming back, thank you... Thank you. You shouldn't have taken it away in the first place. I'm glad you're getting that back because, like, I, I feel cursed. All the things I love get discontinued. So I totally understand. Like, I, these, I love the Ninja Turtle face ice cream bars. Discontinued. El Monterey spicy taco with picante burritos. Discontinued. Crystal Pepsi. Discontinued. Ecto Cooler. Discontinued. All this stuff. But I'm glad you're getting your pizza back, man. Yeah, maybe next too. thing they'll make is a McRib McRib Mexican pizza. A McRib Mexican pizza, huh? <laughs> that would be disgusting, would but eat? I would try it. Yeah. Are I you gonna go out on the nineteenth for real and uh, grab me one? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. First in line. If I could stay there all night, dude. If I could pre-order, I'd have a lawn chair just like people wait for Star Wars movies to come out. I'm gonna have a lawn chair. I'm gonna piss in a jar. Uh, whatever I have to do to be the first in line, I will be there for the Mexican pizza. Guaranteed. Someone's gonna pick. Someone's gonna pick that jar up and be like, "Ah, oh, Baja Blast." <laughs> yeah, looks a little different. Looks a little looks a little darker than Baja Blast, but why not? Yeah. Um. So here's another story. 
Megan Fox, uh, star of Jennifer's Body, has confirmed that she and her boyfriend, or fiancé, or whatever the hell he is, Machine Gun Kelly, drink each other's blood. Uh, she says it's just a few drops, but yes, we do consume each other's blood on occasion for ritual purposes only. What's your thoughts on that? Ritual. At least it's just for ritual purposes. I mean, you know, uh, what's the ritual exactly? Do they go into detail? I don't know. Trying to attain 90-minute orgasms? I have no idea. Like, what? what is the... Po- like, Billy Bob and Angelina Jolie had vials of each other's blood, but I don't remember them drinking each other's blood. So this I, is this bizarre. Is, this is blowing my mind, man. I don't know what to think of that. Maybe maybe on the set of Jennifer's body, you know, she just snapped or something. Full method. Full method. She Full went, method. Uh, yeah. yeah, she's still... She's hoping that there's going to be a re or a sequel, and she just wants to be in character. Right? So she's pre- she's prepping... Um, Jennifer, is it? Would it be called Jennifer's fetus? Dude, I don't. Hey, uh, my first dude. My first question, though, Josh, when I read this story, was Machine Gun Kelly is a major pop star right now, and yes, they're dating and everything. But how does she know that he's not out having sex with groupies and stuff? So she's drinking his blood. Does she? Did she make him get tested before she Maybe drank said blood? Maybe they're hardlining um, penicillin or something. You know? I don't. Yeah, I don't know, man. You do that, the ritual. I don't know the, what the ritual is. What? What is for ritual purposes what are they doing? only? Like, yeah. What is the ritual? Is it church? Trying to is revive it like a religious hey, thing. Trying to revive her fucking stalled career because she hasn't done anything like big since like Transformers Eight. I don't like what is. <laughs> she hasn't done anything in like ten years except for date Machine Gun Kelly. <laughs> They're like, we're gonna bring her back. Like, we're bringing her career back. And Jenna, hey, Megan Fox, if you watch the show, I'm not. I I love everything you've done. I'm not trying to be a dick. I just we want to know what you guys are doing. And I'm really looking forward to Jennifer's body too. <laughs> Jennifer's body has really gone away, gone downhill. Damn. I I'll have dude. Transformers Nine, whatever they're trying to plot. Hey, maybe Shia LaBeouf needs to drink some of that too because he hasn't. I mean, Honey Boy was pretty good, right? He's been, he's done a few things, but maybe he needs to start drinking Machine Gun Kelly's blood too. <laughs> yeah, you know, I thought or Harrison Ford's. I thought he was an amazing. Uh, I thought I thought at the time Shia LaBeouf could do the Indiana Jones thing. I really did. I enjoyed the last Indiana Jones movie they made. Everybody hates it. A big reason is because the alien things are like oh, but all the the other ones were like biblical artifacts and stuff, you know, and I'm like, yes, and biblical artifacts are just as much fantasy as mm-hmm. aliens or interdimensional beings. It's still fantastical things. It's still mystical things that can't be proven one way or the other. So to me, it's no different than the Ark of the Covenant, or, you know, or whatever. I like the last one. I feel bad that Shia LaBeouf went nuts or whatever he did, but... Uh, I think he could have really done something with himself because he really took the what was it did separated himself from that. You know, I thought he could have been an action star. He could he could have taken over the Indiana Jones franchise. He, so like, yeah, he maybe he needs of, to drink some machine gun blood. He had a lot of issues with substance abuse. He heavy drinking. Um, he got into some he got into some stuff with like plagiarizing um, some screen. Uh, he, he, like, took people's screenplays and, like, changed them just enough to where it was his. And then people found out. They're like, hey, this is definitely somebody else's work. Like, so he, he did a few weird things. And he's working his way back into the good graces of Hollywood. But he was kind of, like, almost blacklisted there for a little bit. Like, he was also um, reported to be very hard to work with. So yeah. I like Shia LaBeouf. I always have. I watched him on Even Stevens. I think he's very charismatic. He's really funny. And uh, I hope Shia LaBeouf has a full career comeback. I, I hope I do too. I think he was great, man. I yeah, I liked him in, in Dumb and Dumberer. Okay, he was one of the best parts of that movie. I just uh, I hate that right after Indiana Jones, whatever he, that he went out and did like the public urination thing or whatever that really 
really put him on the blacklist. Yeah, he did a lot of he, yeah he did a lot of things that brought attention to him to himself in the wrong way. So hopefully, Shia LaBeouf can get some of that machine Kelly machine gun Kelly blood in his uh, system, and all things will be turned around. Okay, did you hear about? Um, let's see, I want to make sure I get the, the comedian's name right since you're talking about plagiarism. Uh, Carlos Mencia is a big joke stealer. He, yeah. he like uh, went on this show and admitted to going out and watching young up and coming comedians and stealing their material because they couldn't do anything about it. You know, like he's he, taking like these people they're, they could have a real future. He, he's destroying their future and he's proud of doing that to further his. I had heard about Mencia stealing material almost 10 years ago because Joe Rogan yeah. con- confronted him at a comedy show and said, you're stealing all these people's shit and like called him out on it uh, yeah. in front of everybody at the show. And at the time, Joe Rogan wasn't exactly Joe Rogan now, right? Yeah. Mencia was way bigger at the time because there was Mind of Mencia, which was on Comedy Central, and he was just way more known and popular. So Joe Rogan doing that was almost like career suicide for Joe. Well, the tables have turned drastically because Joe Rogan has the biggest podcast in the world. Joe Rogan comments on the UFC. Joe Rogan does everything. Okay, Joe Rogan's hugely popular. Uh, and Joe Rogan still is like, hey, Mincy is a piece of shit. Like, he stole that. You, it's like stealing someone's material is basically like stealing their money because that's how they make their living. So, yeah. He, yeah. He, Go ahead. What? He made a joke. I mean, he made a I'm saying I agree with you. He he's stealing. He stole a lot of. He stole a lot of money from these people. Yeah. Because these, especially when he's bragging about stealing from up and coming comedians, you know, if I didn't if if I didn't do that, that people would do it to the people do it to me. Blah, blah blah. He doesn't. These people. He doesn't give them a chance. He sees somebody with a lot of talents for themselves and steals their shit before they can do anything with it. You know that that's a piece of shit. Yeah, that's um, not. He's, so, so yeah, he's he's the slash tracks douche of the night, Carlos Mencia. Yeah. Yes, Shia LaBeouf shouldn't have plagiarized. That's not cool either. Uh, but out of the two, if one of them's going to get a resurgence, I would rather it be Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, um, I totally agree with you. And you know what? Let's get into the last story of the night, the last story of the episode. Are you ready, Josh? I'm sad, but okay. <laughs> I know this episode's flying by. Um. So, this is kind of a good story. French, a French nun was recently named the world's oldest person at 118 years and 73 days. Uh, Guinness, you know, Guinness Book of World Records, said Sister Andre, uh, a nun born Lucille Rendon on February 11th, 1904, was officially dubbed the oldest living person after Japanese woman... Uh, Kane Tanaka passed away at the age of 119 years and 107 days. The nun, uh, who is partially deaf and uses a wheelchair, said she still, uh, hold on, she's, oh, she still tries to keep her mind uh, sharp and active. Uh, The people at the convent, they get her up at 7 a.m. and give her her breakfast, and then they put her at her desk where she stays busy with little things throughout the day. What are the little things that she stays busy with? All right, don't die. Your job is don't die. I want you to breathe, live, exist today. Uh, I'm getting something from our producers here. There's a new news story. Uh, The nun that you're speaking of has just been arrested for killing a 119-year-old Japanese woman in an attempt to claim the title of oldest oldest living uh, human. Well, if she gets a life sentence, it might only end up being, like, one night. She could be dead at any it? time. What's that? It's one of the little things she does during the day. Yeah. Uh, she's she's, she's a sniper. Wow. Uh, dude, when she, when she was 80, right? When she was 80 in 1983, I was born. She was I 80 yeah. in 1983. That's crazy. That is crazy. That's- What's her secret? Campbell's? Remember the Campbell's commercials with like the 20 year olds that were like 90 or whatever? I don't know. Her like, secret is not sinning, I guess. She's a nun, so she doesn't have sin weighing her soul down. No, and she also apparently drinks a glass of wine every day. 
Yeah, so, okay. 100 and... Dude, I don't really know what to say about that. 180 years old when I was born. That's crazy. That is that's, crazy. I'm, that's that's insane, man. Um, you got anything else to say? You got anything else to say or anything before we end the show? No, man. Just congratulations. Wow. Yeah. That, that's 118 years. That's that's crazy. I mean, she's going to have to really do a lot more things to, to beat people from the Bible that were like 900 years old and stuff. But, yeah. you know, 118, that, that's not a small feat. So, um, no, that's fantastic, that's man. We and, salute uh, you. Yeah, we, we salute your shorts. And uh, great show. Great crystal painting. Yeah. Great co host. Um, great life. Great, great drink and blood. Great, great <laughs> orgasms that last 90 minutes. Just a hell of a show. Josh. A lot of ground. <laughs> yeah, let's end the show. All right. This has been Josh LaRue. And I'm Alex Vanover. Say good night, Alex. Good night, Alex. Good night, and have a pleasant tomorrow. Yeah, mahalo, uh, Before we go, though, Alex. Uh, before we go, though, Alex, I know you're all the way up in Oregon, uh, but I wanted to give you one of these. Uh, but I wanted to give Dews, you one of these so, flaming uh, hot Mountain Dews. So uh, oh, here you go. You. Oh, thank you. Thanks, awesome. man. Uh, no Thanks, problem. man. No problem. Awesome. Man. No problem. Uh, no problem. Enjoy. Good night. Thanks.